is Gabe Martinez, and I'm the singer for Circle Slide. I'm Lee Yoder, I play drums for Circle Slide. I'm Jonathan, I play lead guitar for Circle Slide. I'm Eric Vickers, and I play bass for Circle Slide. Beginning, I was doing missionary work with Youth of the Mission, um, places like Russia. And I'd get the guitar and um, even invite people to come to like maybe the hotel lobby after we shared and distributed Bibles and medicine. I would sing songs I'd written about God in English and then through an interpreter uh, tell people what the song was about. But on like a lot of the times I'd, I'd think, why am I not doing this back home? Why am I like not sharing my faith uh, back home? So I started seeing that music to be a way of doing that and started playing in coffee houses and bars, wherever I could get to where I could experience the same kind of outreach. Um, and through friends, I think everybody kind of, we all have mutual friends that heard what we were doing and felt like we should all meet, almost like a dating service, where people were like, hey, John, you need to meet Gabe. I think you guys would be good together. <laughs> no, it's like, just make music and, and, and have like a friendship thing. And, and they, were, they were so right. I think uh, our friends saw something about what we were all about in our hearts. Yeah, so we're, we're glad and grateful to all of them for putting us together. Sure. Um, the name of the album is called Echoes of the Light. Um, we're so like excited about it. Um, it's been a long time since our last CD, so um, we were able to um, just write a lot of new songs and. We got to work with Brandon B, who's an amazing artist, an amazing producer. He's, uh, he's one of those guys that can just pick up any instrument, just play it. He's like a genius. And that can be very intimidating. The only cool thing is that I've been friends with him for like six years. He actually came out on the road and, and played some guitar and filled in a couple times. So um, instead of it being like this weird vibe, it was actually like a lot of fun. We were joking around all the time. It was very relaxed. John actually would lead us in, in like a Bible study in the mornings, and then that was the only serious thing we do. But I think <laughs> I, I think the I think it was because the themes of the album are so serious. You know, we're dealing with we're talking about some of the heartaches and some of the, the issues that we were going through as, as individuals, and and so the the music is very serious. But inside the studio, we were just having a lot of fun making music, so that was a lot of fun. What can we expect from the album? What message did you like to transfer? How does the album music You know, I I feel that the core theme of this album just deals with those who are underdogs, the, the broken, those who have their backs against the wall. Um, you know, there's people like that are pressed down and, and just lost everything. And through the midst of all that, we can stand and persevere and flourish in love with grace. And musically, there's so much, I mean, all of us have different influences. Um, I think people who want to hear a certain group or a band will hear that in our music. Uh, um, musically, we were just exploring, we wanted to go with bigger sounds than what was on our last album. So we were wanting bigger, if, if we could get an orchestra in there, we could have gotten, we wouldn't want it in an orchestra. We wanted big sounds because we're talking about, like John's saying, big ideas and we needed big music. So big drums, <laughs> you know, lots of, lots of good, fun instruments that, I mean, hand claps. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, that's not a big instrument. <laughs> just a lot of fun. We just wanted to, to make it big, bigger. And the goal was to not, to not sound horrible. That was the goal. Some songs and tell us the background story of the song. Sure. I know you have some song stories there. Yeah. There's so I mean every song on this album has a like a unique story. Uh, the one that I'm the most the one I feel probably like the strongest about right now, as far as the story, is um, a song called Love Amazing, which is kinda towards the end of the album. Um, but every time we sing it immediately people just start to sing along uh, and I think it's because um, well John 
Jonathan had this um, this great melody and this great guitar part, and uh, you kind of uh, had this idea. We were we play it at this uh, this concert up in New Hampshire, and it's by this lake, and it's beautiful. I think you were talking about how you were just kind of amazed by God's presence yeah. and like the hard times and stuff like that. Yeah, it was just a, a time in my life where. And I think we can all relate to this, where we feel that the circumstances around us are just bringing us down. Uh, it just really um, seem to just get the best of us sometimes. But in the midst of that, uh, God reminded me that His love is still greater than any circumstance that I can face in my life. And that's kind of really where it came from. And then uh, Gabe was going through uh, uh, a friend who lost a child. And, that's where some of the song also came from. Because mm -hmm. this idea, like, the song kind of took on a life of its own in that it was this idea, I had to lead worship for this funeral. It was a horrible, tragic thing. But instead of it being just the most depressing event, my friends worshipped at this funeral. And they were smiling and they were crying. But I could tell there was a rejoicing happening in their hearts. And it just blew my mind that there was hope right there being demonstrated right in front of me. And Love Amazing is a song that deals with that. This, this dichotomy of love and hope in the midst of brokenness and devastation and the heartache. And, and the song says, I'll rejoice though my heart aches. And, and that's kind of what, if you, if you don't know who God is, if you don't know the love of Christ, there's this idea that, that He gives us grace of our sin. He reaches out to us in our brokenness and our hurt. And um, one of my favorite things is this idea of peace that passes understanding. It doesn't make sense that you have peace, but you have it. And that's, uh, that's what life is. Yeah. Um, Do you guys all write? Yeah, we all write. Yeah, yeah. I, I tend to write most of the lyrics. So sometimes I think we all know what the song's about, and then I'll come back later on and say, I changed what the song's about, so, sorry. Um, but there's, like, um, let's see, Nothing Compares to You, is, um, that's the song you like. Yeah, it's probably my favorite song on the entire album. It just, it, it's originally kind of written around a hymn, um, mm -hmm. then sings my soul, and uh, just, it talks about how, you know, there is nothing that compares to to the amazingness and the awe of God. Um, and I also really like it as a drummer because it's, I don't know, I would say it's probably one of the more, uh, it's one of the more complex songs yeah. in, in the album as far as music goes. You get to shine on it. He, he gets to look It was good. fun to play, it was fun to record, <laughs> and I, I, I love playing it live and stuff like that. So. Yeah. yeah. For me, I think, you know, I've got kind of two two songs on the album that I'm really a fan of. Uh, well, actually, I'm a fan of all of the notes, but <laughs> I, you know, I'm definitely yeah, it's it's solid beginning to end. But I'm definitely when it comes to a live performance, uh, we have a song called The Litany, which actually started at the same place I believe that Love Amazing Amazing started out of the same show, just kind of throwing around bass riffs. We ended up with this song that has a fantastic live energy to it. It's got some edges moments where it sounds a little bit new too, but at the same time it's it's more aggressive than than that would be. And the other song on the album, which is an absolutely beautiful track, is the closing track called You Are Everything. And we have this great opportunity to work with an artist named Randy Elrod and film a, uh, a video to uh, that song of a painting that he does. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, the song is, is so blatantly honest from, from the perspective of, um, how do they say it? From the perspective of who do you say that I am? And it's about mm -hmm. people's perspectives of Christ and, and what, you know, how they see Christ. Is he just a curse word? You know, is he, is he God? You know, what is he? And it's a beautiful song and, and the, the piece of art that we did with Randy was just amazing.